Not long after I'd become radicalized, began delving into the all-important capital T theory and started passively lurking the discourse, I very quickly realized that the things I thought defined the left were the very things that were the greatest points of contention. The movement I thought shared some basic common goals wasn't even a single movement. In fact, I realized that some of these ideologies don't even go to the same school. Despite the ever-present media narratives about how the left is doing this and the left thinks this, I've heard it said in these circles that if you get 10 socialists in a room, you'll hear 20 different opinions. And I wish that was an exaggeration. Long story short, I came to the realization that the left has never been united and never will be. And that's okay. First of all, what is the left? The terms left wing and right wing came out of the seating arrangements in the French Estates General during the French Revolution. Those who sat on the left opposed the ancien regime, supporting the Revolution, Republic, and secular society. Those who sat on the right supported tradition, religion, and the ancien regime. Generally speaking, when people refer to the left, though overturn windows vary from place to place, they are generally referring to politics concerned with social equality and egalitarianism, as opposed to the right, which generally supports tradition, the status quo, and the inevitability of hierarchy and inequality. For some folks, having socially progressive politics is enough for them to assign you the label left-wing. For other folks, vague anti-capitalism is a necessary prerequisite to distinguish themselves from the dreaded liberals. Since the days of 18th century French republicanism, the term left has been applied to all kinds of divergent and overlapping movements. Communism, the labor movement, Marxism, social democracy, feminism, LGBT rights, the anti-war movement, the civil rights movement, and even anarchism. Which is strange if you remember that neither the left nor right side of the French SDH general actually wanted to abolish hierarchy. They just wanted to change who was in charge. If you were to ask any conservative what the left is, they tell you that they're a bunch of God-hating, city-burning, commie soy boys or something. If you were to ask a radical centrist, they tell you the left has some good ideas, but they go too far. And if you were to ask today's leftists what the left is, be prepared to navigate a sea of contradictions, wade through a jungle of discourse, and amass a theory reading list far longer than one's lifetime. I'm exaggerating only slightly. Among this pandemonium, there's the ever-present cry to unite the left. Perhaps you've heard it. Surely, if we'd only see what we have in common, we'd be able to Voltron ourselves out of the hell of capitalism. But no, instead we have to get hung up on petty arguments, majoring over miners and making mountains out of molehills. I can't help but question where folks are getting this impression that the left has ever been or can ever be united. The left is barely even a coherent concept. A cursory glance at broadly a leftist history, one I'd rather not see repeated, is replete with examples of division between the thinkers and between the movers and shakers. The first international eventually split between statists and anarchists all the way in 1872. And then when the second international was founded, excluding the anarchists, it split again due to their different stances during World War I. The third international excluded non-Marxist Leninists and the fourth international excluded non-Trotskyists. Beyond the very obvious theoretical splits within Marxism and between Marxism and anarchism, we've also seen the consequences of blatant divisions bear out in reality, most famously with the Soviet Union's brutal crackdown on non-Bolshevik socialists and especially anarchists after the revolution, a pattern that will be replicated in other revolutions of the 20th century. During the Spanish Civil War, assassinations of anti-Stalinist socialists continued under the NKVD, and the Spanish left, united behind the Popular Front, felt the strain and eventual irreconcilable splits within the coalition of Republicans, Social Democrats, Anarchists, Libertarian Marxists, Marxist-Leninists, and Syndicalists. Reformist and revolutionary segments of the many American civil rights movements, each with their own visions of liberation, would also come together and fall apart throughout the struggle. You can honestly point to any movement or revolution under the banner of leftism and find a web of factions and groups that work with and against each other to advance their various distinct causes. The reality is that real-world politics can be so easily simplified into this binary narrative 
and attempts to force reality to fit the mold only serves to delay the inevitable consequences of incompatibility. People say things like, yeah, the left has its differences, but let's unite now to defeat capitalism, and then we can argue about the next step afterwards. But this is not a game. Capitalism is not the final boss. Unity is not some superficial declaration. Revolution is not a single, simple, linear event set into the distant future. Nuance matters. Definitions matter. Means and ends matter. Goals, both short-term and long-term, diverge significantly under the ban of leftism, and so do tactics and strategies. Values are important, and fundamental differences cannot be so easily overlooked. Electoralism and anti-electoralism are incompatible. Statism and anti-statism are incompatible. Workerism and anti-work are incompatible. Land back and settler colonialism are incompatible. Productivism and degrowth are incompatible. Identity politics and anti id poll are incompatible. Differences of opinions, differences of values, have an impact on the level of organizing people of such oppositional opinions can reasonably carry out together. Put them all under the banner of leftism if you'd like. Maybe exclude some of them, as folks are keen to do. But do a Pikachu face when you see black anarchists, for example, refusing to work with class reductionists. Don't be surprised if you see the Zapatistas making statements like this. Don't be shocked if actual libertarian socialists don't all line up to support your favorite social democrat. Don't act confused when anarchists don't blindly accept the state propaganda of other countries and actually listen to the dissenting voices from those places. And if you unwisely decided to take the plunge into the chaos of Twitter discourse, recognize at the very least that this meme is practically meaningless. But what about the right? What about them? We're not trying to emulate the right. Besides the fact that they too have disagreements, the right has it easy. The ideas are long established. They hold power on all levels of society. Their aim is mainly to maintain the status quo or return to a previously established status quo. The left is on a whole different wavelength. Leftism isn't specific enough or grounded enough or unambiguous enough to build a world-changing, future-defining movement off of. In fact, I go a step further and argue that even socialism and communism are often too broadly defined to actually coalesce around. But here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that people early in their radicalization process are bad for identifying as leftists. Everyone starts somewhere. I'm not mad at people who see value in the tomb or identify as such. We simply disagree. But like I said in my video on why anti-capitalism is capitalist, keep going further and keep learning more. I'm not saying never use the term left either. It can be a useful shorthand sometimes. I'm just saying it's useless when it comes to actual, meaningful coalition building. I'm also not saying never build bridges or never work with people who don't have your exact politics. My vision is of a world in which many worlds exist. So I work with people I disagree with, but I also know my limits. I know the extent to which we can effectively work together and we maintain those parameters and we still learn from each other. I'm just saying, I don't care to gatekeep leftism. I'm not attached to it. It's a label that's slapped on any and everybody and each person has their own idea of who is or isn't a real leftist. I know where I stand, and it isn't as a mere subcategory of leftism. Moving forward though, my focus is mainly on sharing my perspective and my principles, on actively organizing my people in every way I know how, with my values at the forefront, and on building coalitions, locally, regionally, and internationally, based on the same, in order to develop resilience, autonomy, safety, and care. I know I can't control the global. None of us can. But local is in all of our hands. As climate collapse descends upon us all, I don't have time to waste on canvassing for politicians who do not care about me. I don't have time to convince people to join some vanguard party. I don't have time to put up with so-called radicals who are comfortable ignoring the real struggle of those under their favorite states. I don't have time to wait around for some imaginary global capital R revolution like it's the rapture. Time and energy are limited. Why spend them trying to fit together pieces from completely different puzzles? I'm in coalition with people who want to tear down systems of domination, not just reshuffle the halls of power 
through reform or evolution. I'm in coalition with people I can share knowledge with, have fun with, stay grounded with, and create the future with. I'm in coalition with people indeed, not just in word. The revolution is now. Peace. This video is a bit different from what I usually do, but I just have to get this off my chest. It's kind of like in the same vein as my anti-capitalism is capitalist video, which I didn't expect to blow up as much as it did, by the way. I just thought it would be a good idea to further clarify one of the points I brought up in that video. And if this video also blows up and you're new here, check out my other videos, please. I got a bunch of comments last time asking me questions that could easily be answered by a quick look at my previous work. This video doesn't exist in isolation, it's a continuation of what came before. I suggest starting with why revolution needs therapy. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with fellow people. Thanks once again, of course, to the family, including our newest members, Le Favre, Tara Aswald, Weird Wizards, Iran Sykes, Bharata and Vidyapati, Luke Iannini, Mickey, Daisy and Candy, Tirana Sipuletas, Diego Ventura, Andrew Beeman, and Marcus Koenike. Join these beautiful humans and support me too on patreon.com slash true. Check out all my other videos for a range of radical topics. Follow me on Twitter at underscore true. Thanks again. Peace.